name is Marco Estes. Um, I am the entertainment editor of Mail Media Mind, and this is the Mail Media Mind Entertainment Hangout. Mail Media Mind is a grassroots grassroots organization dedicated to unifying the Black Bear community through dialogue, insight, creativity, and knowledge. And every Friday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Pacific, we bring you some of the most top, not some of the most, some of the most talked about entertainment news of the week to share our unique perspectives and knowledge on the latest in the world of pop culture. But we are while we strive to entertain, we need your help to enliven the show. That's not saying the show is not live already, but we need your insight as well. <laughs> we we want your insight, your input. So please ask questions, throw in comments. Um, if you got something else that we don't, we probably just glossed over, throw it in there too. Everything is welcome. Your participation is greatly welcome. Okay, so tonight's panelists are. Kingpin himself, um, Malcolm Travers, hey, creator of the Bell Media Mind um, Network. Yo, so how you doing, Malcolm? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, we also have Puckery, uh, Edmund Mouton. <laughs> and I'm going to start doing a top five, like, fuckery events of the week um, because that way we can go ahead and like vote for like one top one top piece of fuckery for the week. Okay. So how you doing, Ed? I'm good, how are you? Okay. <laughs> All right, fellas, let's get this party started because I am dead on my feet. Um, first bit of news this week, we have we're going to go into television. Um, I'm going to let you guys know already that I am five, maybe six seasons behind on Grey's Anatomy. I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> um, but I have kept up with everything Shonda Lane related because Shonda is that, she, she's that shit. You know what I'm saying? She's that shit. So she sh killed off Derek Shepard last night on Grey's Anatomy. Spoiler alert. If <laughs> I love how your spoiler alert comes before the warning. I know. It's just the fact that I could even I, – I, I had got in my hotel room last night, and that was all of my timeline. Yeah. Like emails, and uh, it's everywhere. So you have not seen it. I don't know. I, I, I applaud you. And we White women it. across America have lost their shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving to work listening to the radio, and people were calling in, and people were in mourning and just practically weeping. It was terrible. Yeah. It was not a good night for white women. <laughs> you know. no, I, I did see it. It was on, um, in, what was it, Inside Edition or whatever. I was at the gym, mm -hmm. and they were like, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. And I was like, ooh, like when they dropped that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I I was I caught wind of it because I came across a preview saying that this episode of Grace and Nightmare is going to forever change the way you look at the show. And I'm like, you look like somebody should get killed. I see Derek. I'm yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> And then next thing I know, because I heard the clips, because you know you watch Scandal, you know you you, you cut your DVR off to watch Scandal. They always get next time on Grey's Anatomy, and I'm like, yeah. oh, Meredith and um Derek are having a little issues and stuff that he might be cheating on her. And I'm like, why would she do that? I said, I guess because again in TV world, in the TV world, um, when you get somebody finally together and they're happy, it tends to get boring. So they got to shake it up a little bit. So I'm thinking they're going to probably shake it up a little bit. I didn't know they're going to shake his ass right to the goddamn show. But Shonda, this, uh, Shonda did not play. Apparently, uh, Patrick Dempsey has been acting like a, a diva a diva or a diva, how you want to call him, on the, on the set. And, you know, Shonda's like, I'm the head bitch in charge, motherfucker. Don't try me. <laughs> Ask well, Captain you know, Hyde. he's getting his own show now. Um, um, yeah. I just read that this afternoon that he's actually going to be getting his own show. Okay, I haven't heard that part yet. Um, 
But yeah, I, don't it's an AB, I think it's gonna be an ABC show, but I don't know if it's with Shonda. Oh, it can be because they they each other. I, I heard that they're not they're not really on good terms right now. Um, but if you heard something different, please let us know because my thing is ask Isaiah Washington, ask Captain Heigl, ask um Justin Chambers, ask Columbus Short. Don't <laughs> fuck with Shonda. She has a I'll long just list. Of, and find out. Okay, please let us know because I'm like, who wants to um. I mean, I, I don't say who wants to watch a show with Patrick Dempsey on there. I might get shot. But it's just the fact that, come on now. My whole thing is, okay, y'all just go ahead and cancel Grey's Anatomy. You know, she done took away Christina. Christina walked out. <laughs> now Derek's gone. Her sister's dead. So she it's just like... Everything. Her mother's dead. Everything. Her mother's dead. I mean, her dad's... A, and he, and he like... Wait, didn't she, have, didn't she get like a black sister or something? You're right. She does have a black half sister now. To the chief. Like, so that might be the last. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the last thing that she's going to be able to hang on to, you know. So. Oh well. But yeah, Shonda, don't play that. It was. It was. It was real knowing you, Derek. So. He's <laughs> the dreamy. <laughs> yeah, he, here's actually a quote um, about, uh, wait, was she saying this? Oh, never mind. This is about T.R. Knight. But yeah, I'm, I am reading that she did uh, oh. want him off the show for the actor. I said Justin Chambers, and that is all day. That's Karev, and I'm sorry I meant T.R. Knight. That's bad because I couldn't remember the real actor's name. I don't know him as, all I know him as is Joe, George O'Malley. I mean, yeah, he annoyed me anyway. Yeah, no, I didn't know this. I didn't know that was the T. Well, see, I haven't watched that show until they had that plane crash. That was when the last episode I've seen of that, and I was done. They kill off way too many characters. I'm sorry. I just, but she brings on way too many of them, and then they get put in the background, and then they start talking amongst each other. Like, I don't like this. I don't have no word. I don't have any dialogue. Oh, I'm gonna give you dialogue. You want dialogue? I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna have your ass talk yourself to death. Why you get this bullet outside your head? The last time I watched Grey's Anatomy was the aftermath during the aftermath of the hospital massacre. Right. When the guy was going to the hospital, uh, shooting up everybody. I mean, my face was just wet that night. My mom was like, "Well, it's just a TV show." I'm like, "But it's just one damn gun." I mean, I have them folks in the hospital. They can't take this damn old ass man down. He got one gun. It's not even a gun. It's just a little pill. It's, it's a little, a little pussy pistols. You know what I'm saying? A little. I don't know. I was mad at night. I was high. I said, Shana, you done did too much. <laughs> now, they said she did a lot on Scandal last night, too, but I didn't want, I'm still behind on Scandal. So uh, we we're supposed on. to do I, I, watched, <laughs> I didn't watch last night, but I watched last week last night. Yeah. Mm. I did catch up today. And they yeah. did, they, I guess they, they, they killed off a major character. I won't say who, but I was like, wow. I thought that was actually I was kind of glad, but um, I thought it was a big bold move. Well, I didn't know who they popped off, but I mean, I'm just gonna leave it at that. But because I didn't like that person, I I never really cared for them. <laughs> I agree, um, we're on the same page. I was like, Ugh. and they said, and I was watching Ages of Shield this week, and they showed a um a uh, promo. I'm like, yes, he's gone. <laughs> I was thinking somebody else. I was like, okay, good, it's him. But anyway, we're going to move on. We can get back to scale and I'm going to let y'all discuss that, though. But I want to go to the next topic, which is Daredevil is getting a season two. And we don't have to wait till after the Defenders for it to come out. It's coming out next April. Thank God. So. That's a long time to wait, though. Yeah, but I mean, think about it. You got to wait that long for the new Orange and the new Black, um, House of Cards. You got to wait a whole year. But before you get that binge watch on, you know what I'm saying? Not, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm gonna be that front and center. It just I was I guess I was thinking though, but I know some people thought that since they already had the shows lined up, that they were going to you know, like let them bleed into the, the defenders and then come out with season twos after that. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense financially or um, story uh, story wise because that's too long. That's two years. So. Mm-mm. 
So I'm glad that Daredevil's getting a season two. Malcolm, what's your take on it, man? Oh. <laughs> I just... <laughs> oh. I asked him when he gets back on. I hate when it does okay. that. Um, <laughs> until he gets back, we're going to move on to the next thing. Um, Empire promoted Gabourey, Sidibe, and Taronda Jones as series regulars. Yes, yes. Congratulations, Very ladies. Happy about that. Congratulations, ladies. Yeah. I look um, forward to every scene with Portia. I love Gabby Sidibe, and I love her on the show. I would never want her gone, but Portia just cracks me up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm happy because now I just hope that they get some storylines. I don't hope their storylines start inf- inf- um, interfering with the main storyline. Like, you know, how the fuck Lucius gonna get out of jail? I mean, seriously, that's that's the number one motherfucking thing. Yeah. Um, well, um, did you hear about the rumor that the show was getting canceled? I mean, what yeah, was that all about? It. Let me address that because this shit's been pissing me off. It's like. <laughs> Folks don't take common sense and take it like it's this group called Empire of the Lions Den on Facebook, right? And it's this it. guy who always jumps in there and says, "My sources says the Empire's going to get canceled, and we need to do this to get it back on." And I'm like, "Who the fuck are your sources?" Duh! If I read my sources, then I won't even. I'm like, <laughs> "Are we fucking serious?" Because he sat there and announced to everybody that Michael B. George is going to be Jamal's new love interest. He also announced that um. What's that fool's name? Um, that no, that they were going to replace Jesse, uh, Jesse Smollett as Jamal, and that who was going to replace him? That either John Legend, Common, or somebody's going to replace Jesse Smollett as. That's not um, gonna happen. It was like y'all are eating this up, and it makes me mad. It's like you, they are they are feeding off of people's. He's feeding off your stupidity, and I just jumped in there. I was, you just like, ignore it. But then he just said this: Michael B. Jordan's gonna be Jamal's new love interest, but he's gonna play himself. He's not gonna play have, some character. Have any of his predictions or no found out? No, because they said he also said they told them that um somebody's gonna come on as Cookie's mother. That never happened. Well, that eventually is going to happen, but the, I don't think the casting. Does, you know, the casting was not. I think he tried to sit there and say that they had Lynn Whitfield or uh, Diane Carroll or somebody like this. Oh, please. No, no, no. I'm no, like, no. no. They have to go no. in a whole other direction. Exactly. I was like, there's no way in there. I said, y'all better get this man out. Y'all, y'all block him. Block him out the group. Because y'all <laughs> sitting there eating it up, and it makes me mad. So, no, Empire's not getting counseled. Not the number one rated show on Fox next year. I would, I would not be shocked they announced a spinoff <laughs> by the end of next season. <laughs> We're gonna send we're gonna send Hakeem to college. And oh. I'm like, I wanna write this shit. I wanna write this shit. So but uh congratulations, Gabare in Toronto. Um Screen the T V series premieres in June. We didn't get a chance to talk about this last that last week. Um pretty much it's not gonna be set in Willisbury, it's gonna be set in a town called Lakewood. Um, it's going to revolve around a whole total different group of characters. I don't think none of them have any connections to the uh, film version of Scream. Um, this is not going to be a Scream mask. I mean, this is not going to be a ghost face mask, but there will be a new mask to incorporate the um, murders that's going on. To um, It's going to be a new mask. They, they kinda, it's kind of blurred, but like they did with the original movie, they didn't show the Ghostface mask until like later into the promotional material and stuff like that was released. But um, I'm trying to figure out how it's gonna pan out. Uh, the trailer looks very MTV-ish, kind of like when Teen Wolf premiered. It looked very, you know, okay. It looks like something that MTV would produce. But yeah. Teen Wolf is like the like that's like the top thing I look forward to every summer, besides Big Brother. And they did a damn good job with Team Wolf. Team Wolf is very invent, um, innovative with their big bads. They're not stereotypical like vampires or like um, demons or stuff. They got demons, but they're not like demons that you hear of. These are like demons within like you can go to a beach area or to a um, 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 eastern, you know, folklore and stuff like that and find some of these demons that the, um, Jeff Davis uses in the show. So if 
they I have I have faith in the show, um, especially with the people behind it. Um, what do you guys take on it? I guess are you guys fans of the Scream series at all? I was. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, I like the original for sure. Um, you know, progressively I was more, less and less impressed, but I mean the original one, and I, I guess to a lesser degree the second one, I definitely enjoy. So I mean, uh, and I think it is actually uh, suited for television. I think it would be. I think it being serialized would actually be pretty good. Yeah, it's ten episodes, um, which is not bad. Um, I'm eager for it, but I'm still being a little bit reserved, even though I'm excited for the premise. I mean, it's about it's going to take social media and bring it into the thing. Of, it's kind of let's say it like this: that movie just recently came out called Unfriended. Um, I think the beginning of it is going of the screen whole the whole mystery is going to be around something that happened on social media that. Somebody got killed over and stuff like that, and then there's a body going around killing people in revenge or something like that. And I'm just paraphrasing. And they said that it's going to um, stir up old secrets in the town. So maybe some parents getting involved. You know, everybody's a suspect. That whole type of thing. Um, I hope we have a death every week, kind of like on Harper's Island. That'd be awesome. Uh, if y'all haven't <laughs> seen Harper's Island, y'all should watch this show. There was two I've never deaths. Heard of that. It's on Netflix. It is. It was a limited run show on CBS that ran one summer in 2009. One summer. It was in 2009. I remember I was in Chicago and it happened when it was airing. Two people an episode were murdered. It was a serial killer going around killing people on this island during a wedding party. And wow. it was this big wedding party. And then by the end of the season, it was like about a handful of them left. And I, to be honest with you, I don't know who the fucking killer was because I didn't get a chance to watch the last few episodes. But... <laughs> I just showed you well. Yeah, it did well, but it was it was it was geared to be a one time show, which is what oh, CBS should have did with Under the Dome. They messed it up, but um, it was a one. Think of it as like a thirteen hour long horror movie, so it can be done. I mean, yeah. it, it's, you know, so it can be done. No, I think um, uh, Scream in that regard would actually be a good fit. You know what you're saying, like the whole, you know. I think it would be good serialized, and uh, hopefully they do it well. Let's hope. And yeah, I would also throw in the fact that Scream Queens, which is everybody saying they're looking forward to that instead of Scream the series. I think with though, I think the next step in like horror television is going to be like slasher serial serialized slasher shows, which I think would be awesome. Um, I love <laughs> slashers. I, I love. You know you're not going to be able to leave your house anymore. Oh no. Oh, oh this is going to be bushy. People dressed up in masks outside the door waiting for me to leave the house? No, no, I don't know if I want that kind of star. Oh, I don't, I don't mind. Everybody wants to be a star. Yeah, that's the whole concept, you know, about Scream. So, and my whole take on what I hope Scream, the TV series, does is they explain, like, I hope they keep the fact that there is a ghost face, there, or there was a ghost face killer, running around in another town in America. But the person who's doing all the killing took his own idea because the whole thing about Scream was originality. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you got to have your own thing. And so that's why I'm thinking, hoping that, okay, this these group of people did it. Um, I guess I'm going to create my own little mask and then go around and just get revenge on the people who piss me off. And I hope that's what the case is. And if it, that way you can tie it in to both, you can tie both Worlds together without them crossing to each other, you know. So, well, I hope um, they are tied together. I think that would be cool. It'll be cool. Yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent. Um, okay, uh, I'm gonna jump on RuPaul's Drag Race right quick. This week was the I'm not gonna say annual because they didn't do it for season um six. They didn't do it for season five either. Um, but they brought back an old troop. Trope of say I call it um save a hoe you know what I'm saying um when they just bring them back bring them back up a previously um rejected or um um contestant um this week they did it creatively though this whole episode was very well the last two or three episodes besides the snatch game have been very creative in my personal opinion. Kind of what I've been looking for. It's not like 
predictive. You know what I'm saying? Because the word on the street was that Tracy Mattel was going to come back anyway because of the promos they showed. Tracy, one of the promos in a gown that had not been seen yet on the runway before she left. And so everybody's like, okay, Tracy's coming back. So I think. <laughs> so much for the secret. <laughs> I know, right? Ruth thought he got ahead of that title, but not this time. Um, but the funny thing was, Ruth said, who's coming back in the episode? And in walks Trixie. I'm like, ah. Then he said, wait a minute. And then here comes. Uh, Dang, I forgot her name. Uh, the first one that was Alsa this year. Yeah, Holly then he Grant, called everybody's name. He called everybody back who had been taken out the show. So I'm like, oh, they gonna have to compete to get back on the show. That's interesting because nine times out of ten, the dress Trixie might have on might be the one in this episode, which means she might not be coming back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, it kept it, it brought back the suspense. Yeah. I'm like, then it kind of ruined it again when he was like, okay, you the Remaining the the um rejected queens have to work with the uh remaining queens and you guys gotta be conjoined twins and the team that wins um the challenge, the person who's rejected gets to come back in the game. So I was like, Okay, I like that. I like that. I thought that was one of the best episodes this season, with the other one being um not the not the snatch game, but the one before the snatch game. Um, it just, uh, I mean, this is, I'm, it usually takes me to get to episode three to fall, finally, like, care for the contestants. I'm still finding, you know, I'm still trying to figure out, I, I, I have a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm liking Kennedy. I'm what? I was going to ask you if, you if you have, like, a favorite yet. Like, do you have one that's like, okay, this is the one I'm looking for to get? So it sounds like you don't. I don't right now. I, two of them have went home. Um, that is, Jaden went home because I was pissed because I have my, I know somebody who is very close to Jaden. And plus, Jaden is Tennessee. He, he He's from Tennessee. You know, he represents Tennessee. That's the first Tennessee I think has been on the show. Um, so... He's gone, and then um, I actually liked um, Jasmine Masters a little bit. Now, I first saw Jasmine, I'm like, oh. but Jasmine was out doing one-liners, cracking me up and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay, Jasmine. Now the ones that are left are Pearl and Kennedy and Ginger Minj. They're the only three that I really care for now. Everybody else can just go kick rocks. No, Katya. Yeah, them before I really care about everybody else can go kick rocks. I don't care if anybody else in the show. But I think those four are gonna end up being the final four though, hopefully. But nine times out of ten, they probably get rid of Kennedy and she'd be like the sixth one, you know, the the not the sixth one to go though, but the top the last six, she's gonna be the one that's gonna be taken out. And I think they're gonna do one more and then the last, the final four is gonna go to the finale. That's what I'm thinking they're gonna do, like they did last year. You know, so you you have none of them, nobody. No, no. I used to well, back in the day. I used to go see Jasmine Masters uh, perform. She was really good. Uh, for I guess for, for the the clubs that I went to, um, but because I may run into Jasmine Masters in the future, I am not going to talk shit about Jasmine Masters. <laughs> Um, I will just say that when I went to go see her perform in person, she was absolutely one of my favorite uh, performers. That I, she had a lot of. She's really good at like performing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I just think the acting challenge took him out, but he gave. But he took him on self. He he took his own self out, in my personal opinion, because. Untucked again brings out a lot of stuff. I had no clue that Jasmine had already packed his bags. When they, when they got through with their acting oh. challenge and he bombed it, he had already packed his bag. And he was like, Rue could probably come here and tell me, you might just go home and I'll be packed. And he had gave up. And so and the sad part about it was they paired him up against Kennedy, who was his idol. So, uh, I mean... The, the we knew that was coming, though. Yeah. And they so, had set that up from the beginning. Mm -hmm. they, both him and her were talking about well, him and her, him and Kennedy were talking about how they wanted like um, fame and Pearl and Violet to go home and stuff like that. 
And you notice that every time they do the like they'll have the first, you know, bit of the um show when they come back to the workroom before the credits roll. Uh-huh. And everybody who says something nasty or something shady or the they will end up going home. It got kinda of predictable because the first episode you can you didn't know though, but then the second episode, uh Sasha Bell says something with talking to Pearl. I'm like, okay, they giving her a story like she's gonna go home. Sure enough, that's what happened. Same thing with Jasmine, same thing with Kasha, same thing with Candy Ho, and then it was like, okay, it's a pattern going on here. And I think they switched it up these last two episodes, but I don't know. But, um, Malcolm, you just, like, I don't watch. I, I saw the first 30 minutes of the first episode, and I was unimpressed. But, okay. mind you, mind you, uh, I usually need some help. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I usually will uh, feed off of Breeze's uh, opinions of it, but he is without internet right now, so we haven't been able to watch it. But I will. I'll catch up. Yeah, I will catch up. See, you have you, to me. You haven't missed a lot this season. This season's been I, I've bonded uh, better with other seasons before, but I mean, it's still entertaining. Though. I'm still I'm watching it all the time. I still love it. Yeah, and I was going on record saying that I have. There's only three. Favorite seasons out the whole group. Well, no, it's four. First, second, four, and six. And I'm not going to put them in any order. It just those were the ones that had people who popped. And the other seasons had few characters that popped, but they were overshadowed by a lot of negativity. You know, like, I mean, I love a good read. Who doesn't love a good read? A good <laughs> and a lot of shade, but it was just like, like, I didn't like the whole Alaska Talks thing. You know, I liked Alaska, but I didn't care for the other. I, mean, I liked Alaska and Detox, but I didn't care for Roxy. I didn't, even though she sat there and cried, and even though she sat there and gave us the, the, the most innovative, uh, you know, when she took that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't care for her, but when she did that, I, had, I was like real, I was in my room like, bitch. <laughs> I was like that bitch. And so, and then in season three, I, had, I liked Shangela, um, Yara and Alexis, I could not stand um, Raja, um, Manila, and um, Delta. And the thing is, I've kind of grown to love both Raja and Manila post-show because they are actually cool people. It just Delta was talking all this stuff. I'm like, Delta, you were the last person to talk about anybody in that group. Don't. Don't. Just shut your (laughs) mouth. Don't say another damn word. I kept tired of her talking. And being nasty, I'm like you. Out of all the your heathers, you're the busted one. <laughs> you know, you don't get a chance Aww. to speak. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I felt. But that's how I felt. But I mean, when he when when he was in drag, it was okay. But then he started talking, and it was like he was tearing down. Like, um, wasn't that the same season where Stacey Lane Matthews was in it? I can't well, remember. I can't remember. Yeah, it was, but he kept tearing her down. That made me mad. Because oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I remember you're right. Because I'm like, if anything, y'all should be cool with each other. And not saying because y'all both are big. It's just the fact that you both know what it's like to be, you know, don't tear her down because she's, she can't look. You, you're from L.A. I think he was from L.A. And look where she's come from. You know, I'm like, help her. You know what I'm saying? Instead of tearing her down, help her. That's why I didn't care for him. So, then again, uh, it's a competition. You know, you yeah, gotta stress that bitch out so that she can fall off the vine. Yeah, but I I I look at it like as um. There's money on the line. There's I'm money like, on the line. But I look at it like from Bianca's standpoint. Bianca tore everybody down. She read them, but then she turned around and hit their ass. <laughs> I mean, she was. She came in with a samurai sword, just slicing and dicing, and was like. Then she turned around. She helped them. I mean, look how she she went into Trinity, but then she helped Trinity out before the end of the show. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like everybody else. And one person who wasn't listening was Laganja, who just really needs needed a hug. But that's why I like you know that's why I like uh, Bianca because she tore him down. She knew it was a competition. My favorite line from her is like, "Do you need help packing?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but she tore she, but she still kept them out. That's all I'm saying. It's like, come on now. But we'd have been on. We'd have spent so much time on RuPaul's Drag Race. I love the show. Y'all got a special I can see. I'm gonna jump on over to books, comics, and music right quick. Um, 
Because I want to hear Malcolm's take on the whole title music wipeout. <laughs> so what happened there? Oh, you don't know? Oh. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, the cabal got together, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, basically got all the super friends together, and, you know, they did the whole title announcement and everything. And I was like, I feel like my life is spread right now because I owe at least 75% of their albums. I feel like I don't already saw <laughs> Like, you're going to have to buy this now. Service because you pretty much owe me now. Because I already knew that there's going to be exclusives. I got to know how Jay-Z works. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can only get this new single by Madonna through our service. I'm like, I'm not paying $20 to listen to a damn Madonna song. I love her to death, but I'm not paying $20 to listen to a Madonna song. So everybody was talking, you know, it kind of like the whole Beats thing, you think, because Beats are like Beats by Dre, you want to wear them, you know what I'm saying, you want to be hip and stuff like that. Everybody can try to be hip and try to jump on titles, music ways. Nope. Pandora. And after a few weeks on in the top um, downloads, the top app downloads, title has sunken way down. Like they're yeah. not even registering anymore. Like Pandora and Spotify and all those other streaming. I think even iTunes Music, or iTunes Radio is beating them right now. Yeah. Well, see, they were the really stupid in the way that they marketed it. What they did was they went on stage and said, oh, feel so sorry for us. We're rich and famous, but we're not making enough money. The money's not going into our pockets directly. So please just, you know, use this service. What? No. You have enough. You've got a lot. So that was, it was a wrong, I understand the whole concept of them trying to get money and all that stuff, but I think that was the wrong way to market it. I think if they had done it more silently, then I think that they could have actually done something really strong and powerful. But people were not falling for that shit. Oh, I'm going to pay you more money because you don't have enough. I can't pay my rent. You. Well, yeah, and I think the price point was a little high. 20 bucks a month for music seems steep. So, I mean, like, had they, I don't know, $12, maybe just a little premium. I can see it costing a little more than Spotify, but even Spotify is kind of expensive. I'm not willing. I mean, Pandora is free. And so is Spotify. <laughs> if you if you choose their free service, there's no free version of Title. So yeah, I think that kind of had a big deal. I mean, probably. And also, they also announced like right before that news came out was that the CEO of um they had um scheduled that the CEO who was over the company at the time they cleaned him out. They they they, they fired him. And they fired a couple other staff members too. And then when they did all of this, they brought in a new CEO. Has to like not only like get the company up and running to a uh, profitable, you know, standard, but also to clean up this PR mess because that's all of the music blogs right now. It's like title is just like title crashes and burns or titles wiped out, you know, stuff like that. But but you never know; they could turn it around. I mean, look at how Netflix is so successful right now. When about ten years ago, Netflix was barely holding on by their fingertips. I mean, they were really, I expected them to really go away, and they pulled it around. So you never know. Maybe they can pull it off, but, um, yeah, not to sell it right now. Yeah, I just hope Jay-Z, um, I mean, I just think that the whole exclusivity thing with him, but I'm not a big, big I'm not a Let's say I'm a ca I'm, I'm in casual. I'm talking about a like laid back casual fan of Beyonce. Like if she puts something out that like I might bump it a couple of times. I'm not gonna be on your face like yes, man, yeah, the new Beyonce. I'm not gonna do none of that because I don't like that. But hey, don't, don't hey, hey, don't talk about Beyonce. The beehive will be all over you. No, 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 no. <laughs> we love Beyonce. We love. Her. <laughs> Our viewers are gonna be like. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then the Q and A because he goes, no what? <laughs> All we gonna start seeing is bzzz. <laughs> exactly. You see, you got the Beehive, and then you got the Illuminati. Yeah. I love Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, y'all. I mean, I'm just gonna just put it out there. I speak for myself. I don't speak for the media. Man, I'm not talk about how I don't. I think I don't like her. It's just that I don't like how people act when it comes to 
protecting her and stuff. But this exclusivity thing, she already got a song out on there. Jay Z just released a song, a new video for one of his songs. I don't know if anybody else has any any, any exclusive stuff under the contract or anything like that though. But you can lose fans like that because most of my thing is Beyonce fans. I lo- I mean, they don't buy her stuff. They bootleg it. So I'm like, what type of fan are you? You bootleg <laughs> her shit. And so, because um, I know somebody who's very like, yeah, Beyonce, bitch, you know, Miss Carter, this and that. I'm like, oh, I'm in this city, but these are all bootlegs. What the hell's wrong with you? And so I'm like, I, was, I should report you. <laughs> <laughs> what I thought was interesting you. about the title thing was that they had to have Rihanna on one end of the stage and Beyonce on the other end of the stage. Couldn't put them right next to each other. There'd be too much awesomeness. People would lose their fucking minds. Oh no, two Jay Z's piece and his wife. I, oh, I'm me. I'm sorry. No, Illuminati, forgive me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there. The mean, the the mean factor. There would just be too much mean factor. There would be too many people that um, it um, Instagram would just explode <laughs> with all the type of memes they have. They put them two beside each other, but. Uh, yeah, so title wipes out. I hope they pick it up, like Evan said. I mean, Netflix did it. Um, I can't think of another service that did it though, but it happened. Um, yeah. Also, in new in the news, um, the WB, well, I mean not the WB, Warner Brothers and DC joined forces with Mattel Toys this week to create to announce a new line of merchandising geared toward the. Um, Geared toward girls, called DC Superhero Girls. Um, excuse me. The line consists of, of course, Bad Girl, Supergirl. Um, I think Catwoman. I could be wrong. I think. Um, Bumblebee. You gotta have a token in there. Um, and Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. So no, let me back up. It's not Catwoman. It's Wonder Woman. I I, I probably get shot for that. Uh, so those are the, they're gonna probably turn those into the new Bratz dolls or the new Barbie because from what I've read, Barbie has been slumping. I'm not like I know like we're talking we're talking about toys for girls, but the point reason I'm bringing this up <laughs> is because the same week um, there was a backlash for Marvel for leaving out all of um, all their merchandising coming up for Age of Ultron. Like T-shirts and like toys and stuff like that, Black Widow is nowhere to be found. So I felt like that was a, you know, score for DC for dropping it in the midst of all the chaos. I, I, I'm not a controversy because now, you know, Marvel can, Marvel fans can start bitching. Man, why the hell can I get Black Widow on the shirt? And they actually said that they did studies and said that guy boys do not they feel like. Having a girl in their shirt makes them feel, you know, like a makes them feel less sissified or punkish or something like that. So, okay? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prime example where that's not true. You know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, that didn't make any sense whatsoever. It's a team, the Avengers. She's a part of Black Widow's a part of the team. Y'all need to start marketing her as a viable person because, in my mind, when you do that, you're saying that. She has no value with the team, and which is really stupid. Because the bottom, I'm a person who buys action figures, and everybody knows that they always it's always a hard you always have a hard time finding the female action figure. Number one, you hope she looks like a woman. Sometimes they will, <laughs> whatever. But yeah. when they do pack them, it's really hard to find those, and those are the ones that everyone goes for. They're also the ones that are. Um, a lack of representation, I think. So I think this was a really smart move on Mattel's part. Um, mm-hmm. They're just going to give, you know, chorus, chorus, chorus. They're just going to give us what we want. So and yeah. I, I think it's gonna, I think it's going to work out really well. Yeah. yeah no, I, I, I I'll say on the um, on the DC side, you have Wonder Woman, which I think is like, you know, sort of the iconic female superhero. So in some cases, I, maybe they even have. You know, more marketable female uh, action figures to make. So I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, but it seems smart. It seems smart to me. So. Yeah, because you get, for instance, they brought in a lot of people who are saying like, why they got um, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn? Those are villains. It doesn't matter. 
I mean, I think some of the um, Brett's dolls, or well, Monster High dolls, has a um, eviction amongst them. So somebody, you know, go back and forth with something like that. But um, exactly. Bumblebee, I mean, nobody, too much many people know about Bumblebee, so it was good they included her um, in the thing. Um, also, they could have, now they got the rights to Static, not Static, but um, Rocket, excuse me. Um, who is the sidekick of? Help me out here, yeah, I mean, I can actually read the milestone comic book. Icon. He, she's oh. the sidekick of Icon, who was part of the milestone comics uh, run from DC back in the uh, early nineties. Um, but Marvel has Storm, Jean Grey. Oh, um, they have a plethora of females they can put on there. Yeah, sure. yeah, of course. I, yeah, of course. You know, there we yeah, go. You know, yeah, that's I good mean, point. But I guess with, I mean, I don't know, I'm not going to get the whole light and dark thing like I did last week with somebody, and I had to sit there and cuss their ass out and just leave Facebook for a few hours. But um, <laughs> it just seems to me, like you, like Malcolm said, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Bad Girl, they're, they're, they can be marketable without any, like, dark history behind them. Um Except Bad Girl had you know had a legs broken by the Joker, I not had to be shot by the Joker or something like that. Paralyzed. <laughs> You're paralyzed. You know, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, you, I, I know my shit. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> but, but see, you know, Scarlet Witch has decimated an entire mutant species. She's done some other crazy stuff. Um, Storm. I mean, it, it, it depends. But I'm not saying they're not well, marketable, but it's. But remember, also, Disney is very smart. Disney, Disney is doing a complete reboot of Marvel. They're doing it, it's a reboot of the movies mm-hmm. um, and the comic books. So now they can make them whatever they want. And mm-hmm. they want to sell toys. So yeah. they'll, they know what they're doing. I trust Yeah, them. I, I trust Marvel, too. And I, 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 I mean, I was, was an original DC fan, comic book wise, and Batman. I mean, anything Batman's in, I'm, I'm, I'm there. But, um, and I, I'm glad that they finally got at least some type of one up on Marvel. Even though I'm a big Marvel Cinematic Universe fan. Burgeoning, um, comic book fan, but yeah, good for you, DC. I was <laughs> uh, uh, Last piece of news was, which is gonna, it's kind of like movie news, so, um, John Stewart would be the Green Lantern, I think, in the Green Lantern movie that comes out later on. Um, my best friend Eric feels as if John Stewart should have been Green Lantern in the Ryan um, Reynolds movie. I had to tell him that there is a such that how Jordan was the first Green Lantern that most of the comics are like surrounded around how Jordan. I said, you know, it's actually four of them. So, and he was like, well, I thought. Green Lantern was John Stewart always. I'm like, no, I had to explain it to him like that's not the case. Blah blah this and blah blah that. And so, but, you know, with the me. cartoon. What's that? No, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying. I think those who are familiar with the cartoon version have only seen John Stewart. You know, from the Justice yeah. League. So going on that alone, I think that was kind of a mistake. I think for those who are not comic fans and you're trying to reach the mass audience, I think I didn't know about Hal Jordan. I kind of sort of knew about it because of a movie that had Hal Jordan in it, one of the Justice League movies, but I don't know, since I've seen the Justice League and Green Lantern, he's always been, you know, John Stewart, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was my first introduction to the Green Lantern as well. I mean, the Justice League cartoon, that, that was an iconic show, right along the lines with the Batman animated series, but the thing about DC stuff is that all that's still connected. The Batman animated series, the Superman animated series, and the Justice League are all connected. And I think they're all connected with Young Justice and all this stuff, and then I think the movies are connected, so it's just the fact that this DC animated universe is just awesome. I mean, However, but, I will say this. One thing that DC does all the time is they love to tell the same story over and over and over yeah. again. How many Superman origin stories do I need? Come on. I'll give you that. i give you that. i give you that. We all know the story. Let's just let's get to it. i give you that. Um, I have yet to see Batman vs. Robin or the Throne of Atlantis, but if it's the Court of Isles, I read it. Um, I read that you know storyline, 
comics. Oh, it was brutal. I hope I pray that they do um the new the um death of the of the family storyline later on. That was crazy. But um before I even get into that, um I'm just gonna jump on over to movies. Speaking of John Stewart, everybody said that Common should be John Stewart and um the Green Lantern movie. He just fits the John Stewart mold. But then some people said Common can't act it worth the shit. So um DC is still gonna use him, but they're gonna use him in Suicide Squad. They don't know what character he's gonna play yet though. They're gonna keep this is a mysterious character. So everybody's saying he might appear in Suicide Squad as John Stewart, the Green Lantern, or somebody said that he might appear as Black Manta. Um, you know, so it just depends. They they just keep his role a secret. It doesn't even matter who they pick for Black Manta. Black Manta is going to be wearing that helmet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm like, I don't get what they're going to do unless they got a new design or something. I don't know. So, But uh, speaking of superhero movies, Scar- uh, not Scarlet Witch, but Elizabeth Olsen announced that she will, in fact, be in Captain America Civil War, which makes me think... Um, this is going to be Avengers Age of Ultron 2.5 uh, because, <laughs> I mean, everybody's in that movie. You have, now you got Scarlet Witch, you have Black Panther, you have Spider-Man, you have Iron Man, you have Captain America, you have Hawkeye, you have uh, Falcon, Black Widow. I mean, it's just going to be insane. And yeah. this movie has not shot one frame yet. It is come out next, and it comes out next year. I, I'm just amazed. What yeah, that- it makes sense to me, though. I mean, like, to me, I thought, you know, the last Captain America movie was kind of a good lead-up into the next Avengers. I mean, they were talking about S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. so much. I was just like, okay. Uh, it feels kind of like a mini Avengers movie. Maybe not 1.5, but, you know, like a 0. .75. I mean, it was mini Avengers. <laughs> I mean, you had a little team up between uh, Black Widow, Falcon, and Captain America. So, you, you know. And, uh, no, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, it's got to be big. It's, it's you know, they got to prepare you for that Infinity War. So, you know, come on. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, yeah, I agree. It's going to be huge, but you know I'm going to see it. I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to see it regardless because of Marvel movies, because of Captain America, though. But come on, you got to, can you, I, it's Black Panther. Yeah, yeah. Spider-Man and one movie together. It's just like, <laughs> <laughs> be all the just all sure. of the out. It reminds me. I've been in a movie theater. Like y'all remember the Fire Heartbeats when um Eddie Kane came out and was singing to that girl in the audience. She was doing all that, you know, you know all that. That's gonna be me watching Black. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> can we get can we get a uh, an example no. of that? No, I never. No, <laughs> no, I, no, no, not tonight. If I was drinking, maybe. No, but not. <laughs> Not tonight. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be me in the theater. My friends were like, bro, 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 bro. I'm like, it's Black Panther. <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's Black Panther. Look at it. I'm like, let me chill out. Let me chill out. But anyway, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for it. Speaking of movies, after the whole um, Batman vs. Superman and then the, um, what's the other trailer? Ant Man trailer and then. Um, the new Star Wars trailer. Everybody like, yeah, I got you. Are you gonna do that? I'm gonna throw this out here. Bam, bam. We still <laughs> kept it up. I mean, all weekend long. Um, right after we did last week's hangout, Star Wars, the Star Wars convention was going on. Um, not the convention, but the celebration was going on, and they released a teaser trailer for Star Wars Rogue One, which is the first in the group of anthology series movies that's going to be take that's going to take place in the Star Wars universe. But not have any effect with the um, trilogies. Uh, Star Wars Rogue One is going to take place between um, um, the Attack of the Clones, but the Episode Three and Episode Four. Um, and the, if you have not seen the trailer, it has Obi Wan Kenobi talking about the fall of the Jedi um, Knights and stuff like that. While they're showing a pan, a panning over a forest with some alien flying creatures, and then you see a Tie Fighter flying towards what what looks to be the the construction of the Death Star, and then that's it. 
that, that, that's pretty much the trailer. Um, it has a lot of people. I mean, they already cast that movie, but um, most of they still added people to the cast. I don't. I think it comes out next Christmas or something like that. Um, but I, I don't see Disney. Also, we got a clearer look at the Batman vs Superman trailer, and even though me and Malcolm disagreed last week, I kind of. I'm kind of going back, you know, what I said last week. It looked okay, you know. I saw Batman a little bit more clearer, so I'm 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 content. I'm 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 happy. I I still want to see just a bit more, but I'm happy. Um, and then we also saw um, Quentin Tarantino threw his head in the ring for you know trailers for most for um, most anticipated movies. For his new western called The Hateful Eight. There's not one frame of film on the trailer, but it's enough to get you excited. It tells y'all about the, the eight characters that um will be um playing in the movie and stuff like that. And then they showed the final trailer for Jurassic World. And if I wasn't already excited for that movie, I'm triple, quadruple, infinity excited for this movie now, because it gives you a plot. The movie. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. The first couple of trailers, you get a sense of what what's going on, but it kind of raises the stakes with this new trailer because it's they revealed so much that it's just, it, they, they revealed a lot of carnage. They revealed a lot of um the uh, the plot of basically why they did this. What's the rep, uh, um. Not the, re- the, the repercussions of this, you know, it's all that. Oh, you gotta so, go. Okay, Edmund, we'll be seeing you, man. I'm sorry. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I got somebody at my front door. So uh, I either gotta wrap my gat or. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. All right, y'all. All right. Peace. See ya. Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited for it now. What do you think? Have you seen it yet? I have not. Um, I have to say, honestly, I, I haven't. I haven't really uh, been that excited about it. Um, I think it's probably going to be on par with the other movies. Um, but something about it, maybe, maybe I'm just too logical. It's just like, why? Why would you go to a park full of dinosaurs when you've had it fail? Already. <laughs> well, well, they mentioned in the movie that uh, they mentioned in the trailer that I mean they struggled getting it back up, but every time they brought in a new attraction, they bring in more seats. They they feel them. They feel more seats, and so yeah. I guess they ran out of samples, <laughs> and they created decided to sit there and say, "We're gonna create our own dinosaur." And you know, it's just a whole thing of like, man would never learn if you can't play God. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I, I think I would have learned from the first T Rex, <laughs> especially yeah. when it was stomping on the streets of San Diego. What the fuck? I I don't know. <laughs> okay, the that part. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying <laughs> it, it boggles the mind. Like I I I cannot really believe it, and I'm like. You know, when does the carnage start? Like, you, you, as soon as I get there, I'm like, okay, when when do they start eating this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I give you that, and um, it's, uh, the movie tells you that there's twenty thousand people on the island where everything goes to shit. So there's no boats, so it's just like this buff. <laughs> just See, that just like seems that. stupid to me. Like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like, I well, think you all deserve to die. I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I see what you. I see where you're coming from. Though. I see where you're coming from. I really do. I really do see where you're coming from. I just, I love those movies. I love the books. Um, the thing about the Lost World that ticked me off was the T Rex T Rex running around in San Diego. <laughs> don't worry in that book. I'm pretty sure you. I don't know if you read the Lost World. No. The Lost World. First of all, I didn't have that big. Um, army coming on there trying to capture dinosaurs or anything like that to take to the other island it was more they found it was a guy who was it, they kind of took the plot from they split the plot up from between the second movie and the third movie because there was a guy who got went to the island to prove that there was um genetic dinosaurs 
that um, there was dinosaurs was being created by DNA and stuff like that. And so um, he went to the island, got lost. So they called in the crew, who kind of like fit, you know, the original um, the, the 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 movie version, except that mm-hmm. there was one extra person, and they merged the two kids into one child. And then made it be um, Ian Malcolm's daughter. So uh, it was just other than that, and then other than the uh, group, there was a group of people on the other side of the island trying to steal samples for the dinosaurs. But it's only like three of them. And if they had kept that movie the way it was in the book, then I would have you know been okay with it because it, it would have been made more sense for them to try to go and try to like stop them because anybody who falls in the island would get attacked. You know what I'm saying? So they had to do something. Of course, somebody, I'll try to think of a way to make money and stuff like this. So, anyway, that's why I yeah, thought yeah. about it. But I love yeah, Jurassic yeah. World. Um, I'll, probably, I'll probably check it out. I'm, I'm just not, yeah. You okay. know. Just... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. I understand, man. I understand. Um, yeah. I'll, before we get into uh, the big topic, it's going to keep it short because um, it's just the reviews about, about Avengers. Um, yeah. Angel Ultron, they 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 dropped early, they dropped this week, and um, if, but, um, I guess since the King of Fuckery is no longer here, I guess we can't do this week in Fuckery. I got one, but I mean, you go, go ahead. I mean, okay, well, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, talk about the um, Age of Ultron views, um. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of good reviews for the movie. Some people, it's funny because the comic book geek websites that went to go see it, they're the ones who are like being, I'm not going to say harsh, but they're being very critical about it. I'm not saying that they're not supposed to. I mean, that's their job. But it's just mm-hmm. like, I'm, they were like one person here, something about like, they didn't they didn't mention this. And after all the stuff that happened, they're out here doing this. And I'm thinking, like, have you, you're a comic book writer. Have you not went from one comic book to another one to the next issue? And then, like, if, the, if there's a storyline that got just finished, then they're not going to pick up right from where the storyline left off. They're going to pick up somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, this, that wasn't a big thing to me. So, um, yeah, but I'm like, it's funny because, like, the top, People from like the like Variety and Deadline and but Deadline had issues with it. But I'm just saying those other top brass um, critics actually like the movie a lot. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's some people out there who some comic book fans that really love the movie, but they say it's it, it carries on. It doesn't enhance the first movie per se. They said, but uh, it sets up for what's to come. So I guess they're trying to say it was a good placeholder in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for what's to come. So, yeah. Well, you know, I I, I didn't really read any of the reviews, but Uh-oh. the only thing that I saw was maybe that uh, people thought it was a little long, which uh, you should have seen coming. It wasn't quite. You know, that was one of those things. Like I, I thought one of the worst movies I had seen in a while was the, the Transformers Four. Uh huh. It was. Just because, yeah, it was long, really, really long. Um, but that's the thing. That's the thing. If you're really liking what you're seeing, you want it to be long. So, and, it, and considering how many characters and such, I'm not concerned about that. But um, you know, you should be prepared for the genre of movie that you're going to see. So, I mean, that's what you expect out of an Avengers movie. It's how long. So, and not only that, but it's like. Marvel Cinematic Universe, it has to set up for everything to come. You know what I'm saying? So I don't... I mean, what do they expect? For them to have... No, eight. Nine superheroes. <laughs> in one setting. And you think they're going to just be like this hour and 30 minute, or like two hour and 10 minute long movie? No. We need we need character development. We, I mean, we have the birth of Vision. We have um the... um. Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch to wreak havoc. You know what I'm saying? We got Ultron blowing up shit. You know, so it's just like, what you expect? I mean, come on now. I mean, it's a Joss Whedon movie. I mean, come on. So, no, I did uh, see this this meme. I think uh, Joe Robinson posted in, in the group where like, uh, what was his name from Big Hero Six? Uh, <laughs> shows up. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> <what it is. laughs> or, I forget his name. Hal, Halifax or whatever his name is. I, I haven't thought, seen the movie yet. I'm you haven't seen that? That was funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to see that. <laughs> it was actually pretty good. But um, I'm, I'm going to rent it from the library. So I'm going yeah. to try it out. But that and also... uh. I posted some with um actually I I I I'm not, I don't mean I stole it from somebody else. I thought it was funny because somebody said something about um Marvel fans joke about how DC stuff is too light, but when DC gets dark, the Marvel fan the D, no it, just, it was somebody Marvel logic Marvel fanboy logic. And so somebody posted on there, okay, the haters have arrived. And so when you posted the reviews thing and the entertainment thing, I'm like, oh, the haters have arrived. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'm like, you know, it's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy that the reviews are mostly positive because I think people went in to try to poke holes in it and the fans are like not having it, you know, like saying, you know, y'all went in, y'all, because I think what the thing was, was that, uh, the, some of the fans are blaming some of the um, sites that are reporting like they're not they're not too thrilled about the movie or something like that. They're like, well, y'all the ones hyping it up, you know what I'm saying? Y'all were hyping it up. Y'all was hyping it up, you know, with all the the interviews, the clips, the news, and all this stuff like that. And now you're trying to sit there and tell us that it's not that good of a movie, bullshit, you know? So I don't know. Yeah. But to each yeah. Their own, you know, to so each I did. Own. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna see it anyway. But I guess, did you see? I guess the interview where um, uh, Robert Downey Jr. walked out because yes. they were talking. Yeah, you saw that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I had to stop work. I I thought that because I I hate when you had that one interviewer who's trying to be more than I'm not saying more than not more than what they are, but it's just like, dude, Robert Downey Jr. is on a high right now. Nobody's talking. I hate when people do that. It's kind of like when they do it with Chris Brown and Britney Spears. You had that one interviewer who want to sit there and want to poke. And I'm thinking like he did the right thing. I mean, I, I laugh. And then somebody <laughs> said, um, I think it was BuzzFeed who did the article that I read about it. Mm -hmm. And they showed the cameraman <laughs> giving the interviewer like this look like, dude, what the fuck? And it's like, <laughs> Everybody was looking here, probably like, "What is your problem, dude?" Like that was so unnecessary, and so I'm wondering if he does he even have his job still, or if he yeah. if he still has his job, did they like some, like you know penalize him or something like that? Because this is the Avengers. There has not been any like life changing event in Robert Downey Jr.'s life recently for you to bring that up, right? You know yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, nothing has changed. Yeah, good point. So, good point. Yeah, it's old news. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, "This he did right." I was probably slap his ass on the way out. But, uh, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna slap no bad. I ain't gonna slap no bad too quick. But uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much what we. That's pretty much it for this week. But we're gonna. I'm gonna throw out my um, what I found uh, was this um uh, was fuckery this week. It actually, came okay. to die. I had a few earlier, but um. I came across this article today. I posted it in all the groups, I think, about this group in Florida. Um, it was a HIV something. Um, I think awareness group or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they had a pool party for you know to, to try to educate the young people about the you know the dangers and stuff of HIV. But if you were any, if you were forty one years old and over, you had to pay a fifty dollar fee to get into the party. No, hmm. they said a fifty dollar donation. Okay. And I was like, this is some bullshit because I mean, this is what I'm talking about when we talk about a regular hangout. We have like a we were talking about the relationship and stuff like that. Yeah. And how a lot of the young people don't really. Pay attention to what the older generations tell it, like doing, and they, mm -hmm. you know, like they expect everything to be, you know, hunky dory. And I mean, I don't know. It just it pissed me off. It's just, it's just a form of ageism that we have to fight in this community, which is ridiculous. If it wasn't for those old fogies or those old uh, people, 
you would not have you would not be able to walk around here holding your boyfriend's hand. You know what I'm saying? Those people get their asses kicked so you can sit there and live the life that you're living right now. And I just think that this it's kind of it, it's piss, it just pissing me off. That's my we can fuckery so. Yeah, yeah. Now I didn't have much on fuckery. I was gonna actually see if I could find something on uh, Breeze's or Edmund's page. Uh, let me see. If they have anything? <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. other than your, you know, typical like fight videos. I think I saw one of. Um, let me see. I saw this one. It was like if uh, Disney princesses were black, and that was that was a lot of fuckery there. <laughs> You know, Sleeping Beauty was getting kissed, and she was like, uh, "What's your credit score?" <laughs> oh wow! And then oh. it was instead of Pocahontas, it was Brocahontas. I was like, "Oh my god, that's that's a lot of fuckery." That is so, fuckery. I mean, yeah. you know, we do other stuff besides that, folks. I mean, come on now. I mean, but and I got another fuckery. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna go ahead. We're not gonna do a top five this week because we already went over the hour. But we did it good though. We only did it like I think. We're within an hour. No, because we started at nine ten. So we're within yeah. an hour. Okay. Yeah. I got one last rant and that is the descent too, which I just saw tonight, and I can't get my two hours back. Um oh, really? <laughs> Yeah. Cause that pissed me off. Was it that mm -hmm. bad? No, the movie was good to the very end. Um have you seen the descent? Yeah, I have. Hey, I so like you haven't the first seen the, one. Have you seen the second one? How you plan on no. seeing the second one? No, no. Okay, I'm gonna do it right this time, y'all. Spoiler alert, because I'm gonna say y'all some time. <laughs> hey, the movie picks up, I think, a few days or a day or two after what happened. The first movie with Sarah running the the late the lead, the only girl who got out the cave, running around. They find her, and they um try to uh see what happened. And you know she's belligerent and all this stuff. And then they sit there, and calm her down, and she tells them, you know, there's something inside of the caves and. She takes them. Now she don't take them back in. They make her go back in. Oh, and wow. so when they get back in there, because she's they know she, there was six of them or seven, I can't remember. And she yeah. came out. She's all bloody and stuff. And so they're like, what's going on? So the sheriff in the local area takes her back with a couple of people. I don't know if they cave experts or something like that. And they go into the caves. Of course, they <laughs> come across the goddamn creatures and stuff like that. And the creatures start taking them out one by one. Right. Then it gets down to, I think. Sarah and this it was this one it was a share the sheriff and the sheriff deputy who was a, this black girl young black girl black woman you know and the sheriff who was being an asshole because he felt that um Sarah killed all the girls and stuff like that and then he saw the creatures but he's still trying to gun and try to like you know capture Sarah and stuff like that while he's trying to catch up with the others um he gets saved by Juno Mm -hmm. You remember who Juno was, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so she's alive. She's a, okay, but she's been stuck down there for the longest time. And so they find the remaining, they find Sarah and the deputy. Mm -hmm. And Juno and Sarah going to it, but they tell, them, they tell them to stop. We got to get out of here. So the sheriff decides to sit there and like handcuff his arm to um, of Sarah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. And Juno is the one who leaves them out because Juno said we got to go through the way where they bring their food in. That's the way they get out because mm -hmm. they know this now that you have to be quiet. You can walk around if you just as long as you're quiet. They they can't see you. They're gonna hear you, and so they're almost out. And then they had to cross this little goody type bridge that collapses, of course, <laughs> with the heaviest with the heaviest dude. Of course, he's the last dude standing, so he's heavier, and so he falls. But he got his arm. Uh, he, he got his arm chained to Sarah. Yeah. So Juno was almost about to leave, but she chopped the dude. She told him to definitely chop his hand off, or they both gonna die. So they chopped the sheriff's hands off and let the things take him under. So they're almost out. Then the creatures come, and the girls it's like a kick-ass you no know, woman scene. They kicking, they killing all the creatures and stuff like that. One of the creatures cuts Juno real bad, and so she before she dies, she takes him out. So the sheriff girl, I mean, the, the deputy, the only the black deputy is the only person still living, like standing, because the reason why Sarah's trying to get her out is because the woman has a daughter. We all know that Sarah's daughter died in the original movie and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So Sarah sacrifices herself so this woman can get out. This is where the rant comes in here. Okay. She gets out. She's running. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like... <laughs> 
Did she get hit by a car or something? No. <laughs> she stopped and tried. I'm like, fade to black, fade to black. And then, like, she stops and she's trying to get a signal. So I'm thinking, like, okay, one of the creatures is behind her. Uh-huh. No. It's some random ass old man who pops us out of here with a shovel, drags her back to the hole for the creatures to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> But don't you know that's how he's supposed to end the horror movie? I, I'm just... But no, it's just a, it took away from the last fifteen minutes because everything came full circle because they had this whole thing where Sarah kind of felt bad for leaving Juno down there. Then she finds Juno alive. They fight and then they try to save each other. Mm-hmm. Juno and Sarah, they both sacrifice themselves so this woman can get out because she has a daughter she's trying to get home to. Yeah, it just took away from all of it. It was just so random. So I got pissed. He never saw this old dude before. He's just a random old dude. He probably was at the beginning of the movie, but it was just it was just you forget about him. You know what I'm saying? So I guess he's been feeding these creatures. But the thing is, like I somebody um brought up to me on Facebook earlier, they probably thought they were gonna do a third movie. Right, right. And the, and the, the reception from the second movie killed it. Right. And I'm thinking like they should have left it open ended. You know, anybody else could have walked into their cave. It was, or the thing is gonna get out into the city or something like that. So, but anyway, that's my rant. That's my rant. <laughs> um, but thank everybody for showing up. Thank you, Malcolm, for showing up. Yeah. Thank you, Evan, for showing up. Um and um same time next week. Um, but also we want to keep pressing that we are reading The Warmth of Other Sons by Isabel Wilkerson. It is a great book. I've I've really enjoyed it. Um and we will be talking about it um, May 6th, sometime in like first part of May or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And I was thinking that we might not be back next week because I'm going to be in Atlanta next weekend. Yeah. But I will be posting. Yeah, I'm going to be posting uh, some of the places we're going to be going. I want to get to a restaurant before the Avengers on Thursday. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This time next week, I hope I am going to be uh, balls deep in the. Uh, <laughs> In the Eagle, hopefully they'll have Black <laughs> Onyx night. Wait. I don't get to go up there enough, I'm hoping. So, I don't know. We'll see. And, hopefully uh, I'll be there with you next week, too. I forgot all about that. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> oh, boy. That'll be nice, but, uh, though. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. I can't I, I can think of anything else of um, entertainment-wise. I just saw... Yeah, Grey's Anatomy people crying. There are YouTube videos of them crying. And... Are you serious? Well, you know, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Breakdowns. People are like, oh, God, they got to kill them off. <laughs> Just, it was so bad. I cannot wait to start drinking and watch that. Get my laugh on. I don't <laughs> laugh. I mean. I mean, it's just you don't fuck with Shonda Rhimes. I'm sorry. They could all be prevented. Y'all should y'all should have sat there, called Patrick Dempsey up and told him, "You are doing too much. We need you on the show. Calm down mm-hmm. on the set. We need you, Derek. We need you." And just told him to calm his ass down. He probably still have a damn life on the show. But then he wanted to leave. He agreed to it. So hey, both yeah. parties. But yeah, I, just cancel it, Shonda. Just go ahead and cancel it. Yeah, no, that show's over. No one's gonna see that now. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It should it should have been canceled a while back. I don't know. I agree. Obviously. But uh, yeah, I think the Bruce Jenner interview was tonight. The- yeah, my mom is all into that right now. She well, she's it's over with now, but she was all into it. It yeah. just went off. It was two hours long. Um, yeah. So she recorded. So I might check into it myself. You know. Um, no. Yeah. Good old yeah. Bruce. <laughs> but uh yeah um but um we, we will be back at the same time um uh, may 8th um mark the calendars um also check us out this sunday at um 2 p.m eastern 1 p.m central um 11 a.m pacific and we will have our regular hangout with you know Plenty of news stories that happened with down this week. Um, I cannot wait to hear you guys' thoughts on a lot of this stuff. Um, hot topics, you know, still time to put your hot topics um, answers in or anything like that. If you have any other questions or um, 
stuff you want to add, just DM us or put in the groups and stuff like that. And please stop by mailmediamind.com where you find all types of content, um, old videos, um, um, clips from previous Hangouts, as well as our podcast, which is the Mail Media Mind Bearcast and the Mail Media Mind Real Housewives of Atlanta Bearcast. Um, we are also able to find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, Pinterest. Yeah. I, I don't do Pinterest. I need to start. <laughs> We're all on social media, y'all. Google Plus, you know, just find us and we will, as I, as I like to say, hashtag find the DN. That's my own little thing. But anyway, <laughs> just find the hashtag find the DN and we will, you know, hope to see you there. Um, until next time. Peace. All right. Peace.